Hi, we're back for another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking, where you ask the questions and we give you the answers. Our first question today comes from Mo. Do any of your ECUs incorporate transbrake creep and bump? Well, Mo, the answer is yes. The Haltech Elite 1500 and 2500 series ECU both offer the creep and bump function for racing your automatic car. For those of you who don't know what a bump or creep feature is, we need to go back to the beginning of how we'd race an automatic car in a drag racing application. So what we'd actually do is when we come up to the line, we have our trans brake button. So when we press that trans brake button, the transmission actually engages first gear and reverse gear. That way we can load the engine up against the transmission making a huge amount of horsepower, but the car actually doesn't go forwards or backwards. The problem with this is that when we come up into our staging lanes, if we're stuck on what's called the trans brake, the car can't move forward. So the engine management system can actually be wired so that there's an output that goes to our trans brake solenoid, as well as our input, which is normally a button on the steering wheel or on the top of the shifter. So when we touch the button on the top of the shifter, for example, the car will bump or nudge forward so we can go into our full stage. Likewise, we might have a button on the steering wheel, a creep button, so that as we press that button, instead of the car lurching forward suddenly, it'll slowly creep forward until the car goes into full stage and you're ready to race. Our next question today comes from Clutch Tricks. I'm putting an LS into an 89 Fox Body Mustang. What ECU would you recommend? Well, Clutch Tricks, for this blasphemous conversion, I'd recommend the Elite 2500 series ECU because we actually make a full LS terminated harness. So that means that you can lay it over your LS, plug everything in, power it up, and it needs an ignition switch, and away you go. If you're a bit budget conscious on this build, you could use the Elite 750 series ECU, and that way you'd make your own wiring harness and you'd save a little bit of money. Just keep in mind, the Elite 750 does not do drive-by wire throttle control, um, as well as a few of the other advanced features of the Elite 2500. And our last question today comes from Anthony. On Doc's car, you've got nitrous injection via the ECU. How many stages is it running, and what are the triggers set to? Well, Anthony, I suppose, for those of you who don't know, Doc is one of the street racers from the popular Discovery Channel show, Street Outlaws. So he's racing a big block V8, nitrous powered. It's actually got four stages of nitrous. So each stage is somewhere between about 250 and 400 horsepower. Those stages are enabled using our race timer function. So as Doc gets off the trans brake, as we just explained what the trans brake is, the race timer starts, the car gets off the line, after about 0 0.2 of a second, so immediately after the car takes off, about a 400 horsepower nitrous kit enables and the car makes 400 horsepower more than it would normally aspirated. After about 0.8 of a second, a second kit comes on. Then depending on the road surface, it's got two more kits that are about 350 to 400 horsepower each that may or may not be used. When these nitrous channels enable, the Haltech outputs a signal to the nitrous solenoid, so they're all dry kits. So a nitrous solenoid would enable. We then put the extra fuel through the sequential fuel injectors and retard the ignition timing in order to make sure the engine stays alive. Well, that's all we've got time for today. As always, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to leave your questions in the comments below and we'll see you next time.